Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I have something different for you. Um, if you've looked up the description, then you'll know this is not a haul video. This is a review video. Um, figured I'd start 2023 by having a new series when I watch movies and then I collect them for a whole month. And then at the end of the month, I show off what I watched. I don't usually have a whole lot of time watching movies that I want to watch. Uh, because of the kids and their ages, which is fine. So when they when they get a little older, I'll have more time to actually watch what I want to watch. But anyways, um, I've got four titles here that I watched in the month of January. Uh, one, the whole family watched together, but the other three I watched by myself. So first one is Murderous Trance. Uh, this is an MVD visual release from 2018, uh, directed by Arto Hallinen. Starring, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to butcher these names, uh, some of these names anyways. Um, you got Pillu Esbake, uh, Josh Lucas, Rade Serbedzija, Sarah Suli, uh, Kyron Melville, Christopher Fulford, uh, Joannes Lazen, Pamela Tola, Miku Nausainen, and Irina Teresa Perpik. I don't know. Probably butchered that name. <clears throat> but anyway, this is based on this is based on a true story. Um, can a person be hypnotized to kill? Uh, based on the extraordinary true story, murderous trance follows Detective Anders Olsen, uh, played by Pilu Asbeek from Game of Thrones. Uh, as he investigates a case in which a bank robber shoots two bank clerks before fleeing with the money, uh, with the help of a hypnotist played by Rade Serbedzia from Downton from Downton Abbey, and he's he's also in Mission Impossible too. Um, Olsen discovers a sinister mystery involving mind control and the charismatic criminal Jorn Shao Nielsen, played by Josh Lucas. Uh, which was in, he was in Ford Ford versus Ferrari and The Lincoln Lawyer with Matthew McConaughey, uh, who secretly befriends the investigator's young wife, bringing the menace ever closer to the investigator while putting their lives in great danger. Yeah, this film was actually pretty good. Um, it had really good lighting, it had good acting. Uh, the audio for this uh, maybe it was my Blu-ray player or not my Blu-ray player, excuse me, my monitor. Um, the audio wasn't very good. I had to turn it up, to turn it up like a lot for me to actually hear what they were saying. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a pretty good movie. Uh, I give it a three out of five. Uh, I would probably have to rewatch it again because I got lost, because um, I got lost in some places. But uh, yeah, it's worth checking out at least once. So this will stay in the collection for now. Um, if I run out of room, I'll eventually probably part ways with it. But for now, this is good. Uh, next one is not really a movie. It's it's a it's a it's kind of a documentary. Um, <clears throat> so we got movie hoarders uh, from VHS to DVD and beyond. Uh, this is uh, 129 minutes from. Um, it was released in 2021 physically, but I believe it was actually recorded in 2020. <clears throat> um, doesn't really doesn't say anything of who is in here at all on the back at all. But uh, this movie has a lot of uh, other of has a lot of YouTubers in it, uh, and it's also got Lloyd Kaufman from uh, Trauma uh, and a bunch of other people that I've never really heard of before, but. I have met Lloyd Kaufman before once uh, up in Jersey. I went to one of the Monster Manias up there, met him. He was a pretty cool guy. Um, and then you also get Cool Duder, uh, a.k.a. Sean C. Phillips is in here. Uh, Joe and Marie from Martinez Joe 74 channel is in here. Uh, Cinema Sickness, Dave, he's in here. Uh, Rick uh, from Down to Movie is in here. A bunch of other people that I'm not really familiar with are in here too. Um, this movie, this documentary is pretty interesting. Um, it was edited. It was kind of it was edited kind of weird because I'm used to having like a narrator. 
not just people being interviewed, like clips of people being interviewed. But I did enjoy it. I'm obviously going to keep it in the collection because um, it has people that I know and people that I that are part of the community. So um, I don't really. I think I give this a four out of five. Um, I would rewatch it again because I think I missed a few things here and there. But I do. I did uh, get some knowledge on how to um, for ideas for my movie room down uh, down in the future. Uh, don't we have room to have a movie room in this house that we live in currently? Uh, it's a condo, so and we use this room here as the office, and then we only got two bedrooms up in the third floor, and that's my wife and I's room, and then the kids' room. So. Um, Maybe down the road when we actually get a real house or a townhouse with a basement, I'll have a movie room down there or whatever. But yeah, movie hoarders. Check it out. All right. <clears throat> Next one is what me and the family watched. Um, other people have shown this off. I showed it off when I first got it. Uh, this is Minnie and Mickey 10 Classic Shorts Volume 1. Uh, this is from a Disney Movie Club. Um, I got it early, apparently. Apparently, it was supposed to... It came out on Tuesday of this month. Tuesday of this month, I think. Or was it last month? I don't remember. But I got it uh, before the release date. So... Um, you get ten uh, cartoon shorts in here with Minnie and Mickey. You get Mr. Mouse Takes a Trip. Uh, Mickey's Delayed Date. Figaro and Frankie. The Little Whirlwind. Hawaiian Holiday. On Ice. Brave Little Taylor, Bath Day, Through the Mirror, and the uh, the classic Steamboat Willie. <clears throat> and on the, on the back you get Minnie and Mickey right there. You get the slipcover. It's the same thing on the inside too. So you get the, it's the same exact thing here. And then on the inside, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the uh, digital code out. You get the the Blu-ray and the DVD. They both look almost exactly the same. We watched the Blu-ray, obviously. Um, so the picture was excellent. Um, Steamboat Willie had some cracks and pops, but that's because it was from a uh, from the uh, the original source material. But all the other all the other ones that were in color were really good. Audio was great, um, clear, all that. My daughter was afraid of the. Um, um, the giant i forget which cartoon that one was in but she was afraid of the giant i was like he's fine <clears throat> but yeah uh, i give this one a five out of five obviously because it's classic stuff that we grew up with both my wife and i grew up with so um kids seem to enjoy it uh my daughter especially my son i think he enjoyed it he likes minnie and mickey so so, yep, yeah, five out of five. I highly recommend this. Uh, Disney Movie Club has it, if I remember correctly. I think they believe they still have it. So check it out. Last title here <clears throat> was the most uh, recent one that I watched by myself. It's called Broken Diamonds. The movie is very interesting. Uh, I didn't know what to expect because I didn't, I didn't really read the synopsis on the back. Um, <clears throat> so you get Ben Platt. He plays the brother of um, Lola Kirk. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis for you. <clears throat> uh, you got Broadway icon and uh, burgeoning screen actor Ben Platt from Pitch Perfect. Uh, stars as Scott, a 20-something writer who dreams of moving to Paris. After his father suddenly dies, Scott's plans are put in jeopardy as he discovers his sister Cindy. Uh, played by Lola Kirk, uh, is living in a halfway house for the mentally ill, uh, desperate, uh, nah, not desperate, sorry, despite her wild and, un and, and unpredictable behavior, Scott puts his life on hold to take her in. Broken Diamonds pointly follows these characters as they come to understand the effects of sh shared childhood trauma on each of their mental health cumul culminating in life-altering re realizations for them both. So, this movie's funny. This movie's um, full of drama. 
Uh, basically, she has schizophrenia, um, and she has her outbursts, and she has episodes and all that kind of stuff. Um, the acting is really good. Um, you also get um, <clears throat> uh, good support cast. You get Alfonso McCauley, and then you get uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. I really like Yvette Nicole Brown in this film. She did a really good job. Um, she's the, right here, the African-American lady right there. Uh, she did a really good job in this movie. Um, I give it a 3 out of 5. Um, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. So I was like kind of in the middle. So uh, I'm going to keep this in the collection for now. I might have my wife watch it eventually if she wants to. She, I don't know if she likes him or not. She is a fan of the Pitch Perfect series, but I don't know if she likes uh, Ben Platt per se. But yeah, that is everything I have to show off uh, at this time. Uh, might watch a movie today if I have time. I'll have to see what time it is after I upload this. Uh, well, not upload. After I finish recording this video. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, take care, guys, and I'll see you guys uh, pretty soon. Uh, next week, I have I have a box coming from Deep Discount. I didn't go crazy. I got a few uh, a few items in their bargain bin, so I'll be showing that off uh, next time here. So uh, yeah, take care, guys. See you guys next time. Bye.